Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dmitry Fomichov, and I work at uh, Western Digital Research. Uh, and welcome to my talk. Uh, that is called Getting Started with NVMe ZNS on QMU. Uh, so our agenda for today will be just first we can talk a little bit about DNS in general, uh, maybe uh, the rationale of um, introducing this in the first place and uh, some um, select features. I don't want to um, overlap with uh, any other talks that uh, that actually are scheduled for this conference about DNS. Um, and then we're going to talk specifically about um, emulation of zone namespaces in the QMU. And we'll have a, a little demo uh, to illustrate how it works. So I'll start with an obligatory slide about data growth and how do we have a lot of data coming from multiple sources like um, little street cameras uh, keeping us safe and uh, like a huge amount of healthcare data uh, keeping us healthy and uh, like financial uh, data. It's all, uh, for the most part, it's, it's, it, it can be processed due to uh, uh, just uh, in the intermediate stages with um, SSDs and PMEM, but it uh, ends up um, mostly in the clouds and the HDDs. So I don't want to like, uh, you know, talk a lot about this because this is, uh, for this conference, it's kind of, you know, common knowledge. Um, but I, I would like to just uh, to remind everyone that uh, how the uh, flash, we're going to be talking mostly about flash, so how it, how it works. There are some peculiarities actually about um, flash that we need to keep in mind. So it's um, like the SSD like this uh, consists of a lot of bunch of um, chips and uh, and the controller that control them, uh, handles user uh, like the host interface and uh, and there is right, lots of other things. Um, the, so like every this chip, uh, it's 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 comprised of um, um, erase blocks. Or it could be just a meg or like you know five twelve k or something like this, two megs, uh, depending on the design. And uh, the thing is that uh, the data can be only erased uh, um, in the in the erase block granularity. And also, there's a there's also a minimum program size that's smaller, smaller uh, granularity that can uh, that is, is always used for for writing uh, flash, uh, and also the flash wears. So we know that it's uh, it's it's not going to last like uh, for eternity. So that's uh, that's what we need to um, uh, remind ourselves, uh, and uh, we need to. Answer the, the question that I kind of didn't didn't pose it in the beginning. So, the we actually developers like us uh, engineers a long time ago tossed away the HDDs from our laptops, and um, you know, so lots of people say, okay, the HDD is dead, but how come the data actually goes uh, not uh, this? It's stored um, in bulk uh, on the HDDs. So, obvious question is uh, for uh, the cost of uh, costs of uh, SSDs. So let's uh, let's look at briefly like why. Of course the uh, it's uh, the NAND flash is more expensive than the drive media uh, on platters uh, and that's uh, that's a big driver for the cost uh, uh, then also the, the, it, like every modern SSD it, it actually carries uh, a lot more flash on board than it uh, shows to the uh, to the host. So it's called over provisioning. It's it it adds up to the cost. So, so we actually cut the customers paying for more flash than it that it can see, uh, and uh, of course the 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 fact that uh, you know the non cells they have already like cost more. Uh, Territory they cannot be uh, scaled uh, down any any further because of some quantum effects, uh, you know, just getting in the way. Uh, so, so how how to deal? How to maybe? Uh, uh, yeah, they, and I forgot to mention the controllers uh, in enterprises. This can add, add a lot to the cost of the drive. Um, 
so how to deal with this? So, so okay, so right now, in terms of uh, capacity, we can only stack layers of them, uh, uh, like adding more layers and uh, increasing the number of bits. You know, so like uh, uh, for going from TLC to <coughs> QLC, for example. Well, that's this stuff has its own um, downsides. And uh, yeah, so let's talk about uh, over provisioning a little bit um, more specifically. So the uh, why why is it there? <laughs> uh, it's it's basically there to to handle uh, some uh, non sequential workloads because uh, in theory, in ideal, if the if the rights to the SSD would be uh, would be all sequential, uh, but it it would be st still amount of over provisioning needed, uh, like you know just to compensate for flashware and some failures. But uh, other than that, it's, it would be um, uh, not, mu not, not much needed. But the problem is that uh, the modern workloads, uh, actually they're not like that. So just imagine multi-tenant virtualized environment. The, uh, the IO pattern there, it's, it's like as, as far from sequential as it uh, can, can be imagined. Um, so, uh, so what happens? Uh, the, the, with, with this type of workloads, uh, SSD needs to garbage collect, and uh, and garbage collect actually uh, garbage collection is um, is expensive in terms of uh, drive resources, uh, and um, the the common uh, way uh, to deal with uh, with the ability to garbage collect efficiently, um, just to uh, to increase over provisioning, and uh, yeah, that's uh, the right amplification factor will, will be. Uh, will be driven by the uh, SSD moving data internally uh, during garbage collection. So, and it's it's not uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, the um, right right of amplification and, and over provisioning they actually uh, interrelated. So this uh, the, this um, uh, table actually shows the um, uh, dependency on uh, performance on right amplification. So it's with right amplification uh, at, uh, at one factor of one, so the data is just written once. Uh, yeah, we, we have baseline performance. Um, uh, and see there's how latency drops uh, with the with the right amplification. That's because the drive actually has to do uh, uh, internal operations uh, uh, instead of just uh, simply doing the IO. Uh, so, so over provisioning is, is related to that because uh, because uh, uh, the incoming rights, uh, there are non, non sequential rights. Uh, if if the right uh, if the over provisioning is high, they can be just logged uh, as, a, as in a log uh, structure file system, and then uh, the drive will will uh, deal with uh, with garbage collection um, out of band um, in the background. But if, if our over provisioning is, is small, the drive uh, will have to do this garbage collection on the fly during the IO, decreasing performance. So, so that's, uh, that poses the question, uh, uh, over provisioning, how can we uh, minimize? And, uh, uh, and we, can, we, can, we can actually see. So if we have like the host, which if it helps with, uh, with some, uh, Better workload than uh, than just a random workload. That that may actually solve a lot of problems with SSDs. So therefore, uh, there's need for uh, uh, flash host management. And it's not a new thing at all. So just uh, I just uh, just a little trip back in the memory lane. So if uh, when the flash drive first appeared, the the Kind of uh, buggy, and uh, uh, they they would work fast, and then will slow down, uh, and it will be mired in the in the garbage collection that would run and run. Uh, so, for that, uh, you know, there's there was a movement of like startups doing storage arrays, uh, that would be all flash, and uh, what they would do, they would just uh, do host management uh, of the flash, and the host would be the flash storage array. So the garbage collection would be um, like, you know, to avoid uh, buggy uh, garbage collection inside the SSD, it would be done at the system level. 
the wear, wear leveling was uh, was bad uh, back then, and it would be the wear, wear would be leveled uh, across all the SSDs and all the stuff, and this car would uh, didn't didn't really work from from the get go. It, it was implemented uh, around the same time in in Curl, I think, uh, and uh, and some SSDs would 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 have it. Bugs in it, so, so, so of course it's not feasible for for a general purpose server uh, server to have this kind of uh, setup because some some of the solution would require some uh, RAM cards and then the RAM cards and uh, the amount of memory would be would be excessively high. Um, yeah, this this uh, this system from Weeptail. Um, Actually, the, the 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 almost all the amount of uh, RAM that it, it had, it would be a, a huge uh, uh, hash table, just to map uh, logical and phys into physical blocks. Okay, so uh, yeah, a little bit later, the, this uh, there was a, a interesting development called uh, a light in VM uh, framework that uh, actually became. Um, quite successful. Uh, uh, so what the the main uh, the main idea was to expose the in, in like the parallelism uh, that of the controller. Let me go back just to show. Yeah. So this uh, all these channels and dice uh, for flash memory, uh, just to expose them to the system. Um, <clears throat> uh, so it's, so the, there was a command set that was kind of complicated and. Uh, um, it it would uh, it would be oriented for 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 the pass through. Now uh, there was also a uh, an FTL uh, there, so the the uh, the addressing was uh, in chunks. So that actually just uh, kind of makes us think about the Zag ZBC already, right? So there's also chunks that we'll consider just just in a few minutes. Uh, so the, the, the parallel, uh, par the control parallelism was, uh, was exposed like this. And um, so it, like I said, it was, it, uh, it has some degree of, of adoption. There's a couple of big, uh, big names who are actually working with this, uh, with these drives and uh, um, and uh, it worked pretty well, but uh, also the, see, there is still uh, the, um, the some some drawbacks. Where it was not, first of all, it was not industry standard uh, uh, development, and also the um, the the interface was kind of complicated. So that was there was need for something else, for, for something else for the new generation, perhaps. Um, and like I said, let's see, there's uh, uh, the idea was uh, was uh, found in, in that uh, uh, zone storage. Um, uh, how, how about we kind of uh, adopt this uh, zone, zone storage in the, the, to the flash management? So the, the, this is the, uh, the model. So the, um, it, it came from um, um, SMR drives uh, uh, just to Overcome some restriction on the right on the rights in those drives, and uh, the the thing is that uh, the the whole LBA space is uh, is divided by zones, uh, and there's a, every zone that's the right pointer that can be written and then reset. Um, it, yeah, and it's, the good thing about it that uh, there's a, a quite a extensive uh, support for the, for zone storage already exists uh, in the in the kernel in the, some system system applications. So that's basically ZNS. That's uh, that's what it is uh, to ad uh, adapt um, uh, like the uh, zone storage model for the for the um, NVMe uh, drives. So actually, the, the, uh, the what what happens the um, host. Actually, already already adheres to some restrictions to provide pretty uh, friendly workload for the for the flash uh, for the flash on the NVMe drive, uh, and um, ZNS doesn't 
try to uh, to expose any control parallelism because there's some uh, different concepts uh, that are now introduced in, uh, in NVMe, like NVM sets, that can actually handle that part. Uh, so, so overall, it uh, it, it looks uh, uh, not not too complicated, and at the same time, there it can actually uh, they achieve real good um, uh, wear characteristics uh, in, uh, that will uh, allows to reduce over programming and. Uh, and write amplification to all to and on some workloads to pretty much to one and and that will open the doors to uh, to actually using QLC uh, in fact to move QLC, uh, to, to QLC media from TLC uh, with also uh, further increasing performance. So uh, so ZNS uh, was uh, I think ratified in in June of this year. Uh, by uh, NVM Express uh, consortium, and um, and this uh, this is, uh, looks looks uh, real real promising. So I'll just wanna, just want to okay. So the zone storage model. Uh, everyone probably already looked at this uh, on this slide, but there's a couple of uh, couple of things that are new compared to Zach ZBC. Uh, storage capacity can be actually less than this zone size, zone, zone capacity. And there's also active resources, not just open resources. Um, limitation exists for, for this, uh, for these drives. That's because of the difference of uh, flash and, uh, and uh, HDD storage. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would like to just talk about zone append a little bit more. Uh, so, we uh, some somebody may recall like about ten years ago there was a there's a, a active topic of research in academia called anonymous rights so we have like a POSIX right and uh, it looks like this so the the host actually or application provides the buffer amount count and offset on the drive uh, to write and so. How how to how to provide this offset? The, the application has to have an allocator to provide it, right? So, oh, okay, okay. So here's anonymous, right? <clears throat> instead of um, instead of providing offset. Actually, the 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 write itself uh, will will return the uh, the data sets where the data was written. Uh, so why why is this attractive? Uh, because uh, the, the allocators, if if you look at an average file system, uh, like uh, managing free spaces is the thing. Uh, like it's it's that is not not real easy. There's like a bunch of uh, like bitmaps or free lists or even even trees are uh, used just to just to manage free space. Here, what uh, the application just needs to track the total amount of data and uh, uh, and the uh, the drive or or the uh, or the component that handles the anonymous write will will take care of the rest. Will provide the play uh, the play, uh, the point where the data is placed. Yeah, but of course it's, uh, it didn't go very far because uh, there's like, you know, if, if, you, if you're a file system and you get the uh, EA, um, uh, like EIO error, what to do? <laughs> no, there's not much to do for recovery or, or like how, how do you even uh, handle rewrites? So it's, um, yeah, it's, it didn't go very far, but it 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 almost looked like if we would just stack like an, a, a linear uh, device out of this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, chunks that would be uh, would be supporting anonymous, right? That that could probably work, right? So that's that's exactly what uh, what Zanapen actually does. So so that that chunk is the zone, of course, and. Uh, um, appends uh, are just sent to the to the 
uh, zone with the uh, startle B of the the, uh, the, the start B of, of the zone uh, as the allocator, and uh, and all the all the uh, writes they happen at the right pointer, and the zone append command actually will will return the result in the command uh, command status and result. It will return uh, the both of them. Uh, as in, in, uh, upon successful uh, completion of the command. So that's, that's a lot of, uh, a lot of simplification for the, uh, for the, for the host system uh, that relies on zone append, right? So all the fine grained uh, uh, allocation is done by the controller. Um, and also the, um, any, any contention uh, uh, that can happen with multiple writers to, zone, to, to a zone, and actually um, uh, it is um, handled much better. There is no need to, uh, to create a zone lock that uh, actually it can decrease performance quite substantially. Okay, so this is, uh, this is on append and uh, the other interesting feature uh, is zone, uh, zone descriptor extensions. It's a, it's a feature of, uh, um, of ZNS. It actually, some, some fixed amount of data can be added to, uh, to a zone. Well, it's, it, it looks like a key, but it's, uh, the, uh, the use cases for that actually is, is different. Uh, we, yeah, there's, there's a key, key value command set uh, and there's uh, that sort of for specifically uh, for that, but for, for like uh, the descriptor ex extension, they, they actually do something else. So, so the zone can be opened. And at that moment, uh, like that some data that is uh, in the increments of 64 bytes, it can be 64, 128. Uh, if the controller of course uh, supports it, um, it can be assigned. And then when the zone is reset, uh, the, then the descriptor extension is, uh, is, is gone. It's invalidated. So, uh, so what are the use cases then? So, so for example, um, all, the, all the zones, normally they identified by the star LBA, but what if one of the zones actually just you know, it becomes, uh, becomes bad uh, because of like flashware or any other error? So uh, the application can actually assign unique IDs to every zone and untie the zone. Uh, and instead the application metadata will find the zone by, uh, by, by its ID, and like for recovery uh, and uh, just for better scalability. Some other use cases like uh, time stamping for, for backup. You know, it, it's really easy to, uh, to for uh, the uh, backup application that uh, supports uh, uh, these descriptors just to, to check the timestamps and, and backup the data on, uh, as needed. Uh, and of course, the in, in distributed systems like, um, you know, lots of uh, user uh, space file system are used like triplication for data. Uh, so all the zones with identical data can be assigned the, the, the same uh, the same unique ID and it will be real easy to find the copies even in distributed systems so uh, so it, 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 it's a good but uh, still not not every controller will will support them so it's an optional feature okay so that's a system software uh, there are, there are lots of talks planned to to cover the Linux kernel and uh, um, and uh, some other uh, other components that uh, that work with ZNS in this conference. Uh, so we'll specifically talk about the uh, QMU, but we'll also be uh, like using a little bit of NV in VMI CLI. Uh, so all this uh, all this are. Uh, the, Components they actually are available now and, and ready to use uh, with uh, with zone namespaces. So that brings us to to QMU emulation. Uh, so, so why why do we have it? And of course, the, the, we actually uh, need it just because uh, there is there is zone zone SSDs they're not yet widely available. And uh, those that are available actually, you know, some 
uh, development samples. They may not may have not ideal firmware, and, uh, and uh, again for for people uh, who are not uh, uh, not partners of uh, uh, like major major companies, uh, major manufacturers of DNS drives, they can actually uh, get their feet wet uh, with uh, ZNS without waiting. Or when the DNS SSD will become available, yeah, and of course the you know the emulation can be uh, you know just a drive that can be set up um, as a small drive with uh, that easier to uh, to manage and work with uh, that that we, that we will see during the demo. So so the QMU was was chosen as a platform. Uh, for for many good reasons because the uh, NVMe namespace emulation it's it's already uh, it's already implemented there and it works re really well. Um, uh, so so the only thing that needed to be done actually to to add some uh, ZNS specific and also uh, the, I, I I didn't talk about this part but namespace types as a new framework is a uh, uh, is the uh, new uh, framework for adding command sets that is now available from uh, uh, in NVMe. Uh, uh, this one need, needed to be implemented as well. So, so the whole uh, uh, the, the whole code base is uh, the increases. It's it's a, it's relatively um, modest. So let's just jump to to the demo. Um, Okay, let me just, um, okay, just to start the VM. So we, uh, in this part, we will, will be, you know, okay. Gonna have the, the VM that will actually have the emulate and drive. Uh, but in the meantime, while it's booting, we can actually look at the, uh, the config file. So this is the, um, no, wait, right here, yeah. So. Here's the command line to to, to set up the um, uh, ZNS drive. So this is uh, this part is pretty much a regular, uh, 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 you know, just common for the for the regular uh, NVMe namespace emulation. But what is added is this. See, I see those uh, those attributes like zone equals true. This it 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 will turn on the uh, the rest of the uh, this. Uh, this parameter here. So, so if the zone equals true, uh, the uh, the QMU will recognize the zone size, zone, zone capacity. See, uh, zone size is equal uh, to zone capacity in this particular uh, setup. Yeah, but zone capacity uh, in, in in practice uh, probably going to be smaller than than the size. Also, the Max open, max active. If they zero, it it's, it it says unlimited. Um, in practical drives, there will be some non-zero values. Uh, there will be limitation on that, and there's a, a limit on the zone append size, uh, like how much data uh, uh, can a single zone append command actually uh, uh, transfer. And these values are actually, I think it's this one is is, is in kilobytes. Um, this one is megabytes. Um, and the zone descriptor extension size, which is 64. Uh, remember, it's, uh, it, it needs to be always in, in, in multiples of 64 bytes. Um, the last one, uh, the last uh, parameter is the uh, zone, uh, zone file the containing uh, zone metadata. Uh, it's optional, but um, it will actually allow the specifying the zone file. It will allow the um, the drive to uh, the emulator drive behaves uh, to behave like a real drive. Like a real drive will, if some of the zones are like finished or open on, uh, on not open but uh, closed, um, and the, there's a power down, the driver will actually start up and um, and uh, the it will it will actually track the, 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 zones, uh, uh, the zone states and it will uh, uh, provide the correct action, realistic action for that. Okay, so enough uh, of, of looking at that. Yeah, trace events, we just, um, this uh, emulation actually adds a little, a little 
uh, the few trace events that are specific to ZNS and can be actually turned off. We'll see them in the in this window. Okay, so we're in. Okay, so we're, this is our emulated ZNS namespace. Uh, but how do we know it's 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 uh, it's zoned at ZNS? Um, let's see. Let's look at this parameter. Oh, okay, host manager. So this is a zone device. For example, in contrast, if we just do SDA, the system drive here, yeah, it's not zoned. See, and. Um, also, we can look at the chunk sectors, and this this is this will be our zone size. Yeah, it's in five twelve byte sector, so it actually we can see that the zone size actually matches. Mm, and the number of zones. Let's let's see how many zones we have here. Mm, okay, thirty two. Well, let's see if we can do report zones on this. So it should. Okay, let's. Okay, load black zone report. Okay. Just to see it better. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this this is thirty two zones like, as we can see. So this is the start uh, start sector, and the block zone actually shows the right pointer is an offset to the, to the beginning of the zone. And we can see that all, all of the zones they are empty, and they all sequential right required. <coughs> okay, so this is um, yeah the, the block zone actually this this application is not it's just a stock uh, application that came with uh, with Fedora. It's not optimized or changed uh, for uh, for ZNS, but still able to see the to, to to show you the zone report. So what what we can we can actually do a little bit more with in uh, CLI. Okay, so this is the version the recent version of CLI that I uh, actually downloaded from GitHub. So this is what's new. See, there is a plugin, CNS plugin available here. Uh, and what can we do with this? Okay. So there's, we have some uh, NVMe commands and like uh, the, uh, the CNS specific information. There's a, uh, has some has some special um, ID uh, controller namespace commands just to uh, to retrieve the information uh, about about that. Let's see. Okay, so in ID controller we don't have uh, actually a lot, but. You see this this is a Zassel actually zone append uh, 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 limit basically just size limit yeah zone append size limit yeah and this is the the, the value actually is a is a, a binary logarithm of four uh, k I think pages yes so that translates to one twenty eight k actually. Um, okay, so so what does this one give us? Okay, so there are some uh, parameters that are defined in the, you know, this is not, um, okay, so this is more and more, hmm, they correspond to max open resources, max, 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 max active. So uh, this value, uh, minus one or, or, one, or all, all ones, means uh, unlimited. So that's actually corresponds to the values that we've set. Um, and this is the zone size actually, it's in, in, in hex. Yeah, so I think it's in, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's in sectors. So, so this 32K, uh, 4K sectors that should give us uh, uh, 128 meg, I think. 
Yeah, and the um, and this is the um, actually uh, the num uh, the multi multiplier of zone ext descriptor extension size. Okay. So what else can we? Oh, we, yeah, of course we can we can do the uh, report zones. Okay. Okay, so this one, uh, obviously, like in VMCLI is the uh, support for, for ZNS, and uh, here we see uh, capacity. The right pointer is, is equal to, uh, to star LBA because all the zones are empty. So what, uh, so what can we do with the, with the zones? So let's, let's, let's say, maybe open zone. And we need to specify the zone, which one? Oh, maybe this one. Uh, okay, I misspelled it. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, let's see the report. Okay, here's our zone. It's uh, ex explicitly opened, so now we can do something else, like um, finish it, maybe. Okay, let's make sure we don't misspell anything. Uh, okay. Okay, now it's full. Now let me try to reset it finally. Okay, so... Yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, and so, so it's, it's, it's real easy to perform this zone operations. Um, so what, what else we can do? Maybe, maybe run some IO finally, right? So, okay, so let's see, maybe, uh, let me just copy this. Okay, so what we have here is the, uh, typical FIO uh, command for, for zone device. We, we have zone mode D, ZBD uh, and direct equals one. So this is our na namespace and we're using um, IO Uring uh, uh, IO engine. Okay, so we, we have block size and uh, let's try to, to read it with uh, IO depth one. Okay, well, yeah, what happened? So. <laughs> So see, we didn't read anything because uh, because all the all the zones are empty. So uh, FIO doesn't doesn't read uh, above the above the right pointer for a variety of reasons. Most it, it's going to uh, skew the performance uh, if if uh, if the uh, FIO would be allowed to do that. So let's just write stuff instead. Okay. Okay, so I, I actually, I terminated it just to see see this. Uh, if I actually starts uh, with sequential, uh, sequential right, it starts filling zone one by one. So we have some of the zones are full. So when I was, uh, when I actually terminated the, uh, the, the app, uh, it was actually writing this zone. So let's just, that, that's just for illustration. Let's uh, let's just um, let it continue and see. We have some uh, we have some logging going on actually here. Um, okay, so this is uh, this is uh, right with KDF. Now we can read, right? So okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that worked. So how about um, um, maybe random? Oh, okay, that's just, uh, uh, yeah, if you look at this the zones, they're all full. So what we can do, just reset all the zones. Reset zone all, Let's see if it works. It, Okay, and it did. All the zones are now empty. So now, how about we 
No random, right? Again, I'm gonna just just terminate it just to see how see the the zones look in the in the middle of the processing. See, so since it's a random workload, uh, if I actually uh, writes to <coughs> all the all the zones. Uh, if there would be like max, uh, max open, max active restriction, it would only write to, um, to a subset of, 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 of these zones. Um, but this is a FIU actually stock from GitHub. It, it, it doesn't actually have uh, some latest patches that are available for ZNS specifically. Um, okay, so just... Okay, see we're seeing some resets. FIO automatically resets the full zones uh, during the workload. Uh, let's see, it, it ended up uh, actually opened. Uh, uh, because we, we actually, because, because we terminated, right? So uh, if we just uh, reset it once again, and let's do like, um, hmm, maybe my adapt 16. Yeah, why don't do we do this? Okay. So that was a lot quicker, right? So let's look at the zones. Yeah, now they're full because we started from empty zones. So if I just didn't do any uh, any resets, just uh, just filled up the uh, all the zones here. Um, so. So this is the uh, what I actually want to show you. So, so it's uh, emulation works works quite well with uh, this small small device like this, uh, or maybe a larger one that is. Uh, uh, so this is uh, the the performance we're getting. Uh, it's it's because the uh, the backing device is, is an SSD, a regular SSD. <laughs> okay. So that's. Um, Okay, so the work is still ongoing on DNS. Uh, so uh, actually I forgot to mention that uh, uh, that uh, <coughs> uh, QMU and VME is uh, now actually is, uh, is the, as a DDK maintainers and um, uh, the, the, this activity in DNS and the upcoming activity in other, uh, in, v, in VME like uh, command sets, it actually uh, just made it uh, I made it a good idea just to create a separate uh, separate tree for just for for this development and that it's definitely definitely a good thing for uh, for this and uh, uh, so now it's uh, the this patch set, patch set is uh, is in review uh, it has support for zone pen obviously that uh, we yeah we actually didn't try them but that's it it, it, it works um, and the zone descriptor extensions are so supported. Some of the features like asynchronous events and zone attributes are uh, not not yet there, but uh, they will pro probably be implemented a little later. Um, so that's basically my talk. Um, so like the, instead of links, I, I'll just uh, give you this uh, zone storage JS site, which is uh, uh, meant to be a knowledge base about the, this whole uh, zone thing. Uh, it has uh, lots of resources and of course it's now it's updated uh, uh, with some information about DNS. Um, uh, yeah, so if you have any questions there, yeah, just uh, you can visit the website and read and maybe ask the questions there is con some contact information. So the, the, the patches, uh, so I would like to give you some links. So that's the initial patch set uh, and the, uh, all the patches actually available in my, in my GitHub. So just everyone's welcome to, uh, to try it. And this is the latest one there's uh, now it's being reviewed. So uh, yeah, so now I would like to conclude with this and thank you very much for, for your uh, participation and attention. Thanks.